Hey guys, I want to welcome you and let you know how great it is to have you here for the Greater Purpose Podcast. What's up? That's good. Thank you. Welcome to the Greater Purpose Podcast. Glad to have you here this morning. Could be afternoon when you're watching this. Who knows? It's yeah. recorded, right? Our uh, producer, Stephen Wright, is still nowhere to be found. We'll make sure that that's clear because he is in town. He has a calendar. He knows the schedule. He's not there. Do you see an empty chair back there? I see an empty chair. All right. So we're, uh, but we're glad to be here. So and we're glad you're here. So we have a good friend of mine, Robert Boyd. Robbie, sorry, Robert. Robbie, Robbie, Robert, sorry. Rob. We go by all that, right? So I got a, I got several guys we're lining up here, and there's a Rob, a Robert, and a Robbie. So if I call you one of those three, we just know who we're talking about, right? Yep. So real quick, so let's just get started, and and just real quick, kind of tell us a little bit about uh, Robbie Boyd. Tell us who you are. Uh, I live in Alexis, ten South Gastonia Church of God. Yep. Uh, work for a Bearings <laughs> Distributor in Gastonia. And there's not much to tell about me. I'm yeah. a retired firefighter paramedic. Big job though. Yeah. Yeah. Big position over there at the with the bearings. Right. So that was a good that was a good blessing. We won't go into those details right now. But uh anyway, so most of the guys that we have on here, there are some connections with some things throughout their lives and things that have happened in my life as well over the last few years. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. Uh the first thing we're gonna ask you is when did you first recognize the importance of being a godly man? Hmm. I think I first recognized the importance of being a godly man um, when I first came to Christ. Mm. Uh, kind of go back before coming to Christ, I, I'd run from God. I just, I didn't want no part of it. I had a lot of trauma in my life uh, growing up. Yeah. And then um, a, a tragedy had hit and which involved my youngest son. He was uh, four months old at the time, started choking and aspirating on his own vomit. I went to help clear his airway and save, try to save his life. And in process, I didn't hold his head still, which caused a head injury. Yeah. And I was charged with child neglect and sentenced to, South, uh, to two and a half years in the South Carolina Department of Corrections, mm. uh, losing my paramedic license, losing my job as a firefighter. So at that time, I guess you can kind of think I was, I was a lot like Job. I had everything right. and lost everything. Lost it all, yeah. Um, last thing I wanted to do was hear about God, mm. but God wouldn't have it. Yeah. He's kept putting people in my, in, in my place. That's what he does. Right? And, yeah. That's awesome. And, uh, I like to say, you know, when this happened, God said, okay, we tried it your way. Now we're going to do it my way. Mm -hmm. You're grounded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. You're grounded. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was introduced to the chaplain and got into a faith based, uh, program, uh, called prison to, uh, society. And um, in there, I was going to church, taking faith-based classes, taking classes on th on how to transition back into society. Mm -hmm. um, and I just started getting more and more intrigued with the word, yeah. more hungry with the word. And I finally gave myself to Christ. And God, was, was, God was poking you. He was poking <laughs> me. And um, that's where I can honestly say I my my love for the book of job mm. came in wow yeah. because i read job and i'm like wow i can relate mm -hmm. i mean granted i didn't lose all my kids i didn't lose but i lost all my possessions right. yeah um huge loss yeah. a huge loss yeah because i wasn't being a good steward of what he had blessed me mm -hmm. with yeah so well so that was that was kind of the wake up call yeah, the wake up call, the time to become a, a godly man. So, so during that time, I guess, and it doesn't have to be just during that time. It could be at other times. But who would you say is your biggest um, is or was or still is your biggest inspiration as far as um, 
them leading you to understanding that you need to be a godly man? Um, well, I mean, Chaplain Patoka and Mrs. Cook, they were both chaplains. Okay, at, so Mrs. Cook was chaplain at, at, right. at the uh, at the prison. Okay, and then um, Brian Major, who was our choir director. Oh, cool. Um, real, real awesome guy. Uh, now is the prison ministries director for Transformation Wait, Church. Wait, choir director? Yes. You were in a choir there? I was in a choir there. But yet I don't see you in a choir <laughs> at South. Okay, never mind. We won't go there. We won't go into the account of the accountability thing here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, oh, yeah so I, I was in the choir. And, and then uh, Miss Blackwell, she was a, and the Van Roots and then Miss Bernice, mm -hmm. which were all volunteers from Transformation Church that would come in. Oh, cool. Nice. So the pr prison ministry, which we're going to go into some other stuff. We're going to have Robbie back for another another podcast at another date. We're kind of going through the preliminary preliminary uh, things that we always do on the Greater pur Purpose podcast. And we're going to have some guests coming back. Um, and we're going to dig a little deeper into some of the other stuff uh, in their ministries and their lives and that kind of stuff. Um, so, but so that's where your heart for ministry is coming from. Yes. Because, yeah. Got okay. it. So how would you feel? How would you say after all the inspiration and motivation and encouraging that you've had um, that you've been most effective in uh, in applying applying your skills, your abilities, your talents, all that God's given you to motivate others, other men uh, to be godly, young men, older men, boys? Well, I, I guess, you know, since my release, I've, I've been back to Kershaw a number, number of times go, right? once I passed the... Uh, the amount of time I had to be away and off of probation, parole, and all gotcha. that, mm -hmm. um, I was welcomed back into Kershaw as a volunteer. Um, I've been in a number of times, talked to the guys. Um, we've even, uh, a couple of us from the church have gone up there and fed them for Thanksgiving. Right. Uh, poured into them. Nice. Uh, we've even had a couple converted from islam to wow, christianity that's cool so that 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 was awesome it is awesome that's great um but i think the biggest thing is you know with the help of the of the men and women at south i had a, a heart for um, a transitional home right. called freedom ministries uh they were in dire need of clothing mm -hmm. and uh we did that clothing drive. Right. Huge. Huge yeah. clothing. A huge <laughs> outpouring. A little overwhelming. It, it, it was. <laughs> yeah. It was very overwhelming. Like, and you prayed, you asked, and you got. Right? Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, <so>. Exactly. <laughs> and um, it was just it, it, it was just a massive outpouring that we were able to give to yeah. Freedom Ministries. And also some of this some of the clothing went to the probation office to help men. And women oh, okay. uh, coming out, they had, um, we didn't have any women's clothing, but we had a lot of men's clothing, yeah. uh, suits and stuff to help them get jobs. Nice. Right. Yeah. Um, and some of the clothing went to the prison for the guys getting out. Yeah. So they didn't have to wear just plain. Whatever they came tan. in. With. Yeah. No, it wasn't oh, the what they, oh, when, okay, when, yeah. when they go in yeah, yeah. into reception, their clothing basically gets donated into wow. a clothing closet for just to be. So it's gone. It's gone. Oh, wow. So basically, if you don't have clothes when you come in or when you when you get out. It's like somebody brings you some. Then. If somebody doesn't bring you clothes. Yeah. You either walk out and basically a set of tan scrubs. Yeah. Or whatever they got in their little Goodwill closet. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, well, that's cool. That's great. Yeah, and that was a, an awesome um, outreach, and we'll talk about that too on the on the uh, follow up the follow up podcast. We'll call we'll start calling those yeah. the follow up podcasts. So, um, um, so now what we do is we send out um, some topics for you to choose from, mm -hmm. and so you can you can we've mixed it up. My my awesome and wonderful wife Donna has watched every podcast. I mean that is so that is so cool that right there there's going to be a cheering crowd in the background. Because uh, for your wife to be supportive of your ministry is pretty awesome. I think we would all agree with that. Yeah. Um, so she did go through and she said she did not like the title Fast Five. 
So that's why what you got did not say fast five. <laughs> it said five faves. So we're going to let you just plug through real quick. I call them, the reason I call them the fast five, darling, if you're watching, uh, and everybody out there, is because what they were going to do is just kind of pop through real quick and just cover them real quick. Uh, but some guys went a little deeper. Some guys cover a whole, you know, like several categories and that kind of stuff. So we're just going to do it. However, it's just kind of a, a mix up kind of thing. So, uh, so your five faves, you can, you can choose. Uh, it was the men and women who have inspired okay. me. Okay, cool. So a mixture of five um, men and women. And these are people who've inspired me, but it was a little bit more than five. Okay. That's cool. Um, obviously pastor Gilly, pastor Adrian. Absolutely. Yep. Um, Miss Joanne cook, Chaplain Patoka. Yep. Uh, Mrs. Blackwell, mm -hmm. my in-laws, Don and Faye. Yeah, of course. Um, and, of course, my wife, Amber. There you go. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, my wife, Amber, has been in my corner mm. and has kept me grounded. And I've not liked it all the time. <laughs> yeah. But she's helped keep me grounded. That's and, awesome. And, and helped me stay the path. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's um, the guys that have all – not everyone who's come through here has – has been or is married and uh, and that's fine you know god calls us to singles ministry just like um any other ministry but uh the, most of the guys who come through here are married um and that's the one thing that strikes me about everybody is um the strong women behind them uh, that keep them in their in their walk with christ so that's cool very awesome cool all right so um that was how many was that that was seven <laughs> no, seven or eight you're good that's good okay good we could add two more and then you would have 10. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Just kidding. Cool. All right. So um, now before we close on your sports related story that I got to do the part that Donna, Donna did not like, but I told her I can't take it out because it's part of the, it's part of the podcast. And that is your parting gifts. Uh, you're not parting yet, but after <laughs> your story, your parting gifts, she, she said, why do you got to do the, it's the gimmick. You got to do it. So the first parting gift that you will receive today is the, <laughs> Awesome and wonderful and highly valuable bottle of Mr. Bill's STEM education hand sanitizer. Oh, and Bill Ward Photography, which, by the way, just so everybody knows, we're both uh, in the top three nominations for Best of Gaston. All right. We won't know till I, this, see, this will release before that date, I think. So sometime in, in July, end of July, we'll know whether or not we want. But there's your awesome and wonderful and valuable bottle of hand sanitizer. And, uh-oh. Hold it. I wasn't prepared. I told him when I came in here I wasn't prepared, but I am. And it's brand new, a brand spanking new bag of Lego superheroes. And you say, and you say, why Lego superheroes, Bill? And I say, because STEM, science, technology, engineering. You have to build. Yep. You have to build your Lego. Um, and so let's see what we got. You cannot have flash. That's already been promised to my previous guest because I was out of, out. So look, we got, uh, uh, what's his name? I can't think of his name. I know all the Marvel characters. Dr. Strange, uh, Iron Man. I'll take I've, Iron Man. Okay, cool. By the way, I already have my favorite, the Iron Man right there. Um, anyway, okay, cool. There's your Iron Man. And you have to put them together and display him proudly. And also you will receive before you leave, I will sign. This most valuable, authentic, legitimate baseball card from by Will, from Willie Ace. That's just an old nickname of mine. And I've promised that eventually I'm going to tell everybody what, but I'll autograph that before we leave. And so that'll be highly valuable. Just kidding. Uh, but yeah, I, I, um, I have not explained the Willie Ace um, nickname yet, but I'm going to. It's a really cool story. It's a short story, but it's a cool story. But eventually we'll do that. So anyway, so now your sports story. What is your sport? Uh oh, here we go. This is great. Cool. <laughs> well, you know, or sports related story. Sports related story. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I think my favorite story would have to be. I mean, everybody knows that South. I'm a huge Seattle fan. Yep. I'm born and raised in Seattle. Yep. There he goes. And we we'll see, we let other. <laughs> we have no problem with other teams coming in here. So far, he's, I think you're the only one. Uh, Artie came in with the Cubs stuff on. But yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. Go ahead. Um, and by the way, I'm a 49ers fan. So yeah. Anyway, yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's okay. We all can't be perfect. We're brothers. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Go ahead. That hurts. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I, I give another real good friend of mine a, a, 
a bunch of grief I because he's a 49ers ah, fan okay. too. I need, I need he to be introduced us, to him. He calls us the sea chickens and I call him <laughs> the 40 winers. Oh, wow. 40 winers. <laughs> wow. But uh, my favorite sports story was uh, honestly used to be when I worked the Super Bowl 50 when Seattle played Pittsburgh. Oh, cool. But that got surpassed real quick a couple of years ago oh. when my wife and Artie surprised me for my birthday with tickets to go see Seattle play the Panthers nice over here in uh, Charlotte absolutely yeah, yeah and uh, cool. of course Seattle won yeah. which was <laughs> which made 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 my day I sure already <laughs> love that right <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah go Hawks yeah okay cool all right so Russell Wilson I guess was still with them yeah right? Russell was still with of them. course he was there forever until he yeah. until he left now he's where? I don't know where he is now. Uh, so. Denver, I think. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. Got it. All right. So, oh, yeah. And I didn't do this. I was going to uh, introduce my my brand new cup, my brand new Mr. Bill cup. That's not a parting gift. That's just mine. So, and my wife calls me honey. So, and she literally does not call me anything but honey. So, I see, I got all kinds of stories. I got a great honey story that I should tell, but we won't do that. This was your podcast. So, Robbie, I, Robbie, Robert, Rob, however you want to go. I've called you Rob. I've called you Robert. What does your wife call you? Robbie. Robbie. Oh, see, Robbie. Okay. So yeah. we'll go with Robbie. Right. So anyway, Robbie, appreciate you being here. God bless you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. And God bless you. Take care. God bless.